our next demonstration, we're going to be having a look at Metasploit Framework. Now, I'm starting off with the overview of the Framework User Guide. One's got to remember that this framework is number one free. It is used for exploitation purposes. It runs on Windows, on Linux systems, and even your Apple iPhone. So giving us a lot of flexibility and uh, versatility in utilizing this phenomenal framework. Now what I suggest folks is you go and download the user guide, go through it, it's only about 30 pages. It's gonna give you sufficient knowledge on the installation, the getting started by utilizing the console interface, the GUI interface, and you also have the other two options, which is the command line interface and the web interface. So it does actually go into quite a bit more depth so the data store, also utilizing and using the framework, and then some of the advanced features. And then lastly, there's a little bit more on the additional information, the developers, the security of the console interfaces, and the web interface, and then general tips. So start off with the actual user guide. I've gone ahead and actually downloaded Metasploit, and uh, I've downloaded it to my machine over here, and... Uh, Rather than taking you just through a Linux example, I figure for those of you folks that might want to still be utilizing Windows, um, of course for some of your work that you might be doing, you can of course use Windows for Metasploit. So we go along to the actual Metasploit link to actually launch it. And it's under the Metasploit 3. First thing you want to do after installing it is actually perform an online update. So let's run the online update. It uses a, a subversion for the actual updating. So making sure that it's not just updating, uh, you know, payloads as an example, but it's actually updating the whole application. And while that's taking place, I can then further look at the other options off of the program menu. So going along to the Metasploit 3 again, I've got the ability to launch the GUI, the web, and the command shell. And of course, there's also an array of additional tools available and uh, additional documentation. So you've seen the user guide and also a section on development. So once you've actually downloaded Metasploit, you've got everything that you would need at this point. It's your choice whether you want to use Metasploit on a Windows system or on a Linux system. My personal experience is I've had far more um, uh, robustness under a Linux system so a lot less uh, crashes and so forth and uh, what I'm going to do once this update is completely finished is we'll just kick this off with a very easy demonstration and we're going to use the uh, GUI interface and uh, we're going to be attacking a target system so we'll just wait for the update to complete right so the update completed and uh, the command line interface just basically drops away uh, so what I'm going to do is go back to the Metasploit and we are going to look at using the Metasploit 3 GUI and uh, as soon as that comes up we'll look at utilizing just the basic interface initially and then we're going to take you through an array of other example demonstrations to show you some of the cool new features Right, so in front of you, you see the Metasploit framework, the actual GUI interface. And uh, at this point, what we can do is go along to a command prompt, just to uh, give you more of a scenario. And in this in instance, we're just going to use Nmap to do a quick port scan of our target system, which in this case is the 192.168.1.190. And uh, we should get a response fairly quickly back from that target system. And as you can see, we've got an array of services that are open. And uh, one that we're going to be just pushing to demonstrate this portion of Metasploit is the MSRPC support 135, 139, and 445 being open. So at this point, I can go along and just do an RPC search. And within a few moments, I should find the actual exploit and as you can see the exploits are not just for Windows systems there's an array of these types of exploits the fact that we just used RPC as the uh, keyword this has brought an array of exploits up 
And uh, in this example, you can see we have the RPCSS service was originally found by the last stage of Delirium Research Group. And uh, there's some links to the references. So all we're going to do is literally double click on that to select that exploit. The target it is a universal exploit, so it will work on an NT to all the way up to 2003. So we'll select forward. The payload, folks, remember your payload, if you can remember from the presentation, is the actual component that's going to be performing the actions. So the exploit is forcing perhaps a listener open. The payload is a specific action. So in this instance, we're going to go along and look at using a VNC injection. So uh, here we've got the Windows VNC bind TCP. We will actually launch this, which will listen for a connection. It will then inject the VNC server DLL and then run it from memory. So we'll select forward. We do need to provide the information on our target system. And uh, in this instance, we have to specify the remote host target address, the remote port as it is, the uh, VNC host, the port that we're going to use, the default is 5900, and then the local path to the VNC DLL to upload, that's pretty much all straightforward. And we can attempt to use the automatically launch the VNC viewer if present, so it's using the auto VNC. At this point, we're not going to co cover the advanced parameters or the evasion techniques. We're just looking at the very basics and fundamentals of using Metasploit. So once I've configured those parameters, I'll click forward. This is going to give me a summary. And I'm then going to choose to apply this, which effectively will go out, launch the attack. We can see the module output. And uh, we saw how quickly we were able to bring up a remote command shell plus this is the courtesy shell from Metasploit as well as the uh, GUI VNC interface so this is a very very powerful attack because if we wanted desktop access to that target system for whatever reason we would be able to easily gain access to that target system now naturally if the um, administrator or the security person behind that system had their terminal open or their console open, they would too also see the Metasploit courtesy shell. So this is more of a proof of concept. You're not necessarily going to use this.